how does Next actually work? Might sound like a silly question. It renders React on the server. What is there to know about it? Well, I found a lot of the questions that I get about people building with T3 stack and with the tech we recommend here come from fundamental misunderstandings of how Next itself actually works and differs from old ways of deploying things like create React app or v single page app deployments. What makes Next different? How should we think about it? And how does data actually flow through Next.js to your React application? Let's talk about it. This big old dump in the HTML here. This is the content of what gets server-side props returned. Oh boy, am I happy you're here for this stream and video because the whole point of this is that SSR is just the first step. So, Next.js, as we know, is a server-rendered framework for React. The TLDR version is you write React code and before it goes to the users, it gets run on a server. So the user gets a page that actually has the content of the page. If I go to somewhere like, do I have a single, like a simple Vite app deployed somewhere? We did. So this is an app that was built using Vite. Normally you put a query param for the hours, minutes, and seconds. I'm lazy, don't feel like doing that. The important detail to know here is that the HTML that comes down the server does not have the contents of the page. So if I network tab, and actually look at the HTML we got back from the server, you'll see that this HTML is like hilariously empty. It has a div ID root with nothing in it. The reason for this is the content of the page isn't created on a server, it's created on the client. This page is almost instructions for how to make the website. And most of those instructions are contained within this index whatever.js file. This asset file is a bunch of JavaScript that we bundled, that we built when things were deployed on Vercel. And this JavaScript gets loaded by the client and then runs to create the page that the user sees. So the control flow here, if I open up Excalibur real quick, uh, SPA React flow is, well, I'll draw my arrow down. The top here is request, the bottom's the HTML page. I'm too lazy to draw those in here. But the step one is, user receives HTML with JS tag, I should specify that this is like empty. So the first steps, the user receives empty HTML with the JS tag, user loads JS from JS tag, JS from, or JS runs, starts fetching data and creating page. I'm gonna have to make a longer arrow for this one. Eventually data returns, JS finishes rendering page, and then finally complete page with correct HTML. In order to go from the user making a request to this generated correct page, we have to load JS here from the HTML. So at this point, we'll say HTML here, but incorrect. So at this point, the HTML is here, but it is incorrect. It does not represent what the page's content should be. It represents a static cached asset of just some of the content of the page. And until all of these things happen, it is not running or it is not the correct page. And it takes all the way to here to get that correct page because the client has to go do another server trip to fetch data. I could put a, a line actually for each point that an additional request or set of requests has to be made. So request one happens at the top here and then they receive the HTML. Then they request the JS here. So this is the request for that JavaScript. And then once the JS comes in and runs, it has to request the actual data for the page contents. So the first thing you fetch here is the HTML. So first fetch HTML, then fetch JS, then fetch the data you need for the page. And finally then, after all of these steps, you get a complete page with the correct HTML out. So each of these, you request to the server, you get HTML, you do some stuff. You request the server again, you get some JavaScript, you do some stuff. You request the data that comes back again, and now you can actually finish rendering the page. But each of those steps, it's because the server isn't generating HTML per request. On this request, the first one, the server doesn't know what you want. It doesn't know what the user is asking for. It's just handing them an HTML page. And from there, the HTML page can load the JavaScript. And then from that JavaScript, figure out what it's actually meant to be doing. But all of those steps have to occur on the client's device before it can render the correct page. The goal of Next.js was to prevent this. So if I go here and say 
Next.js data flow. What Next.js does, and I'm going to delete all of these lines. I'm just going to delete all of this because most of the info here is incorrect. So user requests page. So what happens here when the user requests the page depends on how you have things set up in Next.js. But we'll assume you're server rendering every page for now. We'll go into what that means and why you might not want to do that in a minute. But for now, we'll say next server, we'll say gets request, runs get server side props. The get server side props function is server code that runs when a user requests the page. So if I request a page, like let's say I'm requesting, I'll just change it, user requests slash user slash Theo. So user requests slash user slash Theo. Next server gets the request and it runs the get server side props function that is in that page file. That get server size props function probably is taking a user ID from the query param, in this case, the slash Theo. It is running that against something like a database to fetch some data. And then it returns that as props for that page specifically so it can render that in to the HTML. So your React code is running here on the server. So React runs on server using properties from get server side props. This means that the actual page, the HTML that has the information that you want the HTML to have on it is run and generated on the server. The server then sends correct HTML to user based on what this React code rendered. And then the user loads HTML, then loads JS to catch up to what server rendered. This catch up step is a very important piece. The catching up is how the, the term for it's hydration, because when your client isn't rendering the whole page, it's just getting HTML that's correct initially. You still want things to change. Like in React, if I have a hook that renders a count, and I want it to go up every time a user clicks, but the server rendered it as zero, I still want it to increase when I click it on the user side. And the way that you do that is you take the, the HTML that you got from the server and you hydrate it with the JavaScript. In order for the hydration to work, it needs to know exactly what properties were passed to generate that HTML, because effectively what it's doing when you hydrate in React is it is regenerating the same HTML in React so it knows, hey, that element on the page matches this virtual element in our virtual DOM. So it can do updates from that point forward. This step, this, H, this uh, hydration step takes roughly as long as the painting step here, where you actually are generating and running that code to figure out what you need to fetch and then fetch it and whatnot. That takes just as long to hydrate. However, the page already exists and the user already sees something. And they're probably reading the content of that page as everything else is updating behind the scenes. And by the time they go to click something, all of the JS is loaded and hydrated the page properly. But what about the server side props? If you have server side props and these return some data that is used to render the page, how does the, the copy of that rendering path that is running on the client know about that data? Well, here's where things get a little hacky. Uh, do I have any pages that have get server side props that I can quickly demo on? I think Ping does. So here's the ping call page for me. And if I go in here and I actually go into the HTML, I'll find a script tag somewhere in here. I'd actually be in the head, maybe not. Oh, next data, here we are. This here, this big old dump in the HTML here, this is the content of what gets server side props returned. This is dropped in the HTML because it is necessary for the JavaScript running on the client to know what was used to render the page so it can properly hydrate and synchronize the client with the server. This here is an important, arguably, hack that Next.js does in order to make all of this possible. So the, the, the magic piece here, the thing that you might not have known about how Next.js works is that this page can only be rendered on the client after the server because the data needed to render this page was included on the HTML itself. So the main benefit here of next specifically is that the correct data is on the page when it renders for the user the first time you don't have the blank pop in that then shows the correct content like if i go to twitch right now see this loading state that loading state is uh, if i slow it on my network you can see it even more or uh like exaggerated i'll put on fast 3g and you'll see there's a state here with like a loading spinner oh wow it's i have to disable cache and knock that to slow you'll see that there's a state there 
where the JS hasn't loaded yet, and it just has that like top nav. Uh, can I easily disable JavaScript on the page? Cool. If I refresh, yeah, you'll see the JavaScript is disabled. And because of that, we never get additional data. If I go to here, I go here and I disable the JavaScript, it's going to hang on a loading spinner still. But the actual HTML we got back has way more in it, including that server data. If I was painting a more traditional view here, you would get that whole view. Hell, if I go to the ping homepage, actually, and JavaScript is still disabled right now, you know that because there's a video that should be playing and it's not. So this is the ping homepage with JavaScript disabled. And this works because the HTML the server sends is correct. That correct HTML means your metadata is correct, your first paint is correct, your general user experience is more consistent because you don't have a big pile of JavaScript that has to load, run, parse, and paint before content makes it to the user. That all said, you do not have to do this on every page in Next.js. You can opt in or out. In fact, on this page, you might notice that it still loads really fast. That's because we don't want to run this on the server. This page doesn't run on the server. When we build our application, when we like npm run build or we deploy to Vercel, since the file for this page doesn't have a get server side props function, Next is st smart enough to generate a unique HTML page for the site at build time. And then this route now has static HTML that is fetched when a user loads the page. That static nature of the content that's being output means like robots and Google crawlers can more easily parse this and get meaningful data out of it. It means users load the page significantly faster. It means less like powerful devices are necessary to load your page in the first place. And it most importantly here means that you don't need to run server code on every request because you generated that HTML at build time and then sent it up to your CDN to share it from there. Static assets are incredibly cheap. And if you're able to distribute those and have those be like fetched by your users, that's going to be a significantly better experience for everybody. I see people saying, but who actually disables JavaScript? Robots disable JavaScript, a uh, bunch of embedded devices disable JavaScript, a uh, bunch of like crawlers, SEO, those types of things disable JavaScript. But most importantly, users have JavaScript disabled until the JavaScript loads. Every user who goes to your site has JavaScript disabled for the first however many milliseconds, maybe even seconds, depending on the speed of their connection and their device. Every user has JavaScript disabled for some amount of time on every website they go to until the JavaScript loads. And ideally, the content of that page will be correct the first time it loads without needing the JavaScript all to load in behind the scenes. Somebody's asking, is there a scenario where this isn't good? It's not that there are situations where this isn't good. There are somewhere it isn't necessary, where you might want to say, eh, don't bother. We'll just fetch everything on client. We do that a bunch at Ping. We have a handful of pages where it's just like the dashboard, for example. Server rendering the dashboard makes no sense. Also, love that the menu button does work with JavaScript disabled. Fun stuff. If you have a page that you just you don't care about the HTML being correct, like people are exclusively using it on computers in San Francisco with really fast internet connections, it's not as big a deal or something that we deal with, you have like a bunch of AV devices you want to interface with. So when I go to this page, I need to use your AV. I need to use your camera and your microphone in order to activate this call. If we don't have JavaScript running, I can't do any of that. This page is actually useless without JavaScript, which is why this page has a big old loading spinner in front of it. It still server renders and it still puts a bunch of data into that server render in order to make the metadata here correct. So when I link this call to somebody, the right stuff comes up when I do that. So like if I go to one of my favorite sites, the Twitter card validator, by the way, super pro tip if you're working on the metadata, one of the easiest ways to know if your shit is working. So when I paste a ping call here, unable to render card preview because I must have broken something kind of recently. Very good to know. Theoretically, this should load fine. Surprise it doesn't. Uh, a URL metadata checker. I think Facebook has one, a Facebook link validator. Sharing debugging, cool. Please work. Cool. This one kind of worked. So here's what it would look like. I have my old T3 logo, Theo's room, come chat in Theo's room. This is what the metadata of that page contains. If this page was client rendered entirely, this would not be able to come through because this would have to load the HTML, then run some JavaScript, then create an updated page. And this robot's not going to do that. They're just going to download the HTML and read it. They're going to stop at that first step. I think that's what a lot of people are missing when they see things like this. 
a lot of devices stop here. So the HTML here is here, but it's incorrect. If your device isn't running JavaScript because it hasn't loaded yet, because you're a server and your server doesn't load JavaScript, because you're parsing things, because you're reading metadata, if you stop here, and a lot of things do, this does not work. You are not getting the data that you need here, realistically speaking. Because of all that, it's important to be considerate of server rendering opportunities when you have them and the HTML contents that your users are getting when you can. So yeah, be more considerate of how your servers are actually rendering things, what's happening where, and to an extent, how the HTML that comes out of your server is shaped and how it looks. There are gotchas here. Yeah, one of the big gotchas is not all code can be run on a server. Things like calling window directly. Actually, I'll, I'll, not all code can be run on a server. There's a lot of code. Um, don't want to make that smaller. There's a lot of code that can't be run on a server. Things that call window. Window can't be run on the server because servers don't have windows. Servers run Linux. Kind of a joke. Seriously though, servers don't have the window primitive, so you can't call that directly and do things to it. You can't like check a user's AV devices on the server because you're not on their device where the AV devices are. You can't call local storage. So things that call local storage. Local storage doesn't exist on the server, it exists on the client. You don't have access to that on the server. If you want things like that, you want to put those in the request to the server so the server can include the right things. It's again, one of those huge arguments for having cookies is the cookie will be in the initial request and you can render the right things accordingly. Other code that can't run on servers, uh, anything stateful. If you have stateful code, you either need to put that in a database and synchronize it, or you can't. Like, like an on-click, a uh, set state, those types of things, those aren't gonna run on a server. Basically anything that isn't there before use effects start running and before actions start running, isn't going to be there when you render on the server. What else is there that I have run into where I like wanted something and I couldn't use it because I was server rendering? Uh, I'd say user devices is part of window. Like the only way I access user devices is through window and some more window based globals. Uh, media queries. Ooh, media queries is a fun one. Somebody asked Theo, what about real time page updates? Isn't it better to have client side rendering for this case? Oh boy, am I happy you're here for this stream and video because the whole point of this is that SSR is just the first step. The thing that Next.js is, and I wanna be very, very clear about this because I feel like this is what people are missing and I'm pumped you asked the question because I wanna call it out. Next only does this. This is Next. This is a normal SPA. Once your HTML has gotten to the user, I should actually move this here because this is the point where the HTML is correct. So this section up here is Next. And this part here is React. Once your server code has run, you're in a normal React app. The only difference between something like create T3 app, or sorry, I would like create React app or Vite, the difference between those and the difference with something like Next is what happens before that HTML comes. If I was to horizontally spectrum, this is probably like the most useful part. There's, if we were very generic, like there is HTML loads, and let's make three of these. HTML loads, JS loads, and uh, JS paints correct content. I'll even call this like JS synced with HTML content. These are three steps that both like a create React app or Vite or other single page app have, as well as something like Next.js. The difference between create react app and Vite versus something like next is purely here from uh, request to complete SPA load. Let me move all of this quick. This section, what the hell? Why is it doing that? I did not bind that there at any point. Why does it think this is here? I did not do that. So this section here, this little bit in this area, this is where things are different in Nextland. The only difference between Next and another single page app is right here. This is the Next Remix section. When you're using something that's rendering on the server and it's something like Next, Remix, whatever else, I don't know why this arrow keeps killing itself. Whenever it's something like Next or Remix and it's rendering running code on the server, it runs here before the HTML loads. But from this point forwards, and I should give this background color too, Not wrong color. I'm also going to move this up. God, why is Excalibur doing this to me? I want to unlink this arrow. I never want this. I, can I just tell arrows to never connect? I'd be okay if my arrows never connected again. Okay, this is the next remix section. And this is a normal SPA. So 
given this spectrum here, you have the next remix section and then the normal SPA. The difference here, the thing that makes these two so different, because right now it looks pretty similar. There's just like that little section in front. The thing that that means, oh God, I can't just make all three of these shorter at once. Okay, better. So the thing that is different here is that the HTML that loads here, I'll put an arrow here, initial, initial HTML is correct and next remix incorrect and an SPA. So the important difference here, like the distinction, the initial HTML when you use next or remix is correct and it is incorrect if you're using a traditional SPA, which means that what happens from here down is different as well. If your HTML is correct, then when the JS loads, it's not filling the page, it's recreating the page in JavaScript land in order to synchronize that state with the page state. So this step is a little different depending on if you're going the next remix route or not. But the distinction that really matters, the point I want to drive home, the, is that the only difference between Next or Remix and something like Vite or Create React App, the only difference in terms of how pages load, render, behave, is that your HTML loads different content initially. This first step is correct if you're using a server-side rendered framework, and it is incorrect if you're using a single page app based framework. And that is fine if the thing you're building doesn't need correct HTML, but it probably does at some point. I saw somebody else in chat saying, this is why a single page app loads faster. No, it does not. Because if I run this code here at build, the thing that the server has cached is the same. If I have HTML that next built and you have HTML that create react app built, those load just as fast. If I want to make different HTML for every request or every user, I can do that. And that will be slower for the first paint, but it won't be slower overall. The HTML, that the user gets from a single page app is incorrect and it will always take more time for them to load the JavaScript, fetch the data the JavaScript needs and then paint the correct page. But if the page is static, I can do that at build time here. And now my page and your page, my page being a next app and your page being a create react app have the same time to that first HTML. The difference is your HTML is wrong. If I want to, if I have dynamic data, we want to fetch, like, let's say we want to fetch my view count on this page. You could load the HTML page with no data in it. You could load the JavaScript that JavaScript parses, renders the page, realizes, oh shit, I need that data. If that's a third fetch to go get that data, bring it back. And now you have the correct content in next and remix. If you choose to block the page on that content, you make one request. The server gets everything it needs, puts it in the page, and then the thing the client gets back is correct the first time. And that overall takes way less time, way less time. And if you don't need to do that because the content is static, then don't block every request on the server. Generate a static page from Nextdoor Remix. It is very easy to effectively turn Nextdoor Remix into Create React App Plus Plus by never using get server side props and never using loaders and actions. The server code only runs if you write it. So don't write it if you don't need it. And now you've just made a create react app style single page app with better build tools or you can block things because you have pages that need content and that's fine too but chances are at some point you're going to want correct html and at that point you're going to wish you were using next or next js or remix from the start and i found on almost every project i have ever worked on i got to the point eventually where i wanted to add an endpoint or i wanted to block on like generating this page or at like I wanted to use incremental static revalidation or regeneration and revalidation, whatever, to make sure the content of that like metadata is correct on request. All of these things quickly get noticed when you have problems that require you to work around them. I, I don't know how to put it other than like, if you don't think you need some form of server side rendering or generation, you're going to regret that soon. You're, you're probably close to the point where you realize that. Somebody asked if you have conditionals on the front end, i.e. like, if content, does that get run during hydration? It depends on where the conditionals are and if the data those conditionals operate on is on the server or not. It's so like if you're blocking the page on getting data from Prisma and you only render a certain view, if that data has like, like let's say you use the user's token or their cookie to fetch the user profile and you only render this page if they're an admin. If you have code that's if user is admin, render this else render something else then the HTML the user gets is correct. I think I've covered everything I want to here. The main point I want to drive home is that Next.js isn't this crazy alternative framework that doesn't do the things that React does. It doesn't in any meaningful way change how your React code runs on the client at all. The only thing Next.js does and the only thing Remix does is the request before 
the content is on the user's device. Next.js makes it easier than ever to generate HTML per page for your users so that when they load the page, the HTML is correct, and then the JavaScript loads and becomes a normal React app. Without Next or Remix, you're getting incorrect HTML, the client has to fetch everything, update it all, then and only then will the user get correct content. And the benefit of these frameworks and the server side stuff is that you have control over what HTML the user gets. But don't think that using Next.js means that you can't use all the other React stuff you're used to. This is still a single page app. And all the people saying single page app versus Next don't actually understand what Next.js is because Next.js isn't a multi-page app framework. It is a single page app framework. It is a React based framework that runs on the server that happens to let you generate different HTML based on different routes. But you're still building a single page app. Once that first page loads, it's just a normal React app. That's it. Like, I, I hope this video covers this well enough that I can start linking to it and no longer answer these annoying questions. Next gives you the benefits of server side rendering and single page app style React applications in one. React is a way to make interactive websites. And Next.js is a way to make the HTML correct for those interactive websites as soon as it loads. That's it. Next.js isn't an alternative to these things. Next is an alternative to React. Next is an alternative to like single page apps. Next lets you build a really powerful single page app with correct HTML from the server on first paint and a much better overall developer experience around it. Next is a single page application framework that happens to be backend ready, happens to run on servers, and it happens to enable you to do really cool things, but it does not have to do those things if you don't want it to, because in the end, it is a way to build React applications. Next is not something that prevents you from having an interactive, customizable, live experience on your app, because I guarantee you, Ping is more of an app than most of y'all saying you don't need Next.js or building. Ping is right about as interactive and live as you can get. Our average page session time is two and a half hours. Two and a half hours on one page. We don't care that much about how quickly that first ping comes through, but having the power of a framework that lets us build the right HTML, build the right JSON, calling the backend in our own single focus environment is so powerful that we use Next.js to build our single page application that is very much an app. Next.js lets us do that better and it is a great framework for it. Just because you don't think you need really good SEO right now does not mean you don't need the benefits of a server rendered application framework. And Next.js is still the best option for that. With all that said, if you still somehow don't get this, ask some questions in the comments, maybe come hang out in the Discord. I wanna figure out what isn't resonating here because a lot of people are asking to, to be frank, not just dumb, but outright stupid questions about Next.js versus Create React App. And I wanna be very clear, there is no use case for Create React App anymore. The templates for a single page app experience, if you really don't need server rendering, are nice. But generally speaking, more often than not, having server rendering will make your life easier. And you should probably consider integrating it in your applications. Hope this was helpful. Join the Discord if you haven't. Subscribe if you haven't for some reason. This button's here, I think. Yeah, over there, click it or on that subscription grind. Appreciate y'all a ton. Thanks for stopping by. Check out the next video.